All right, hello. I'm Christopher Locke. I'm the IBPA Director of Membership and Member Services, and this is the Get to Know Your IBPA Member Benefits webinar. Today, I'm very excited. We're going to be talking about the IBPA NetGalley program, and uh, NetGalley's Christina Radke and Kitty vs. Luce, and I want your book and audio book to be successful. So today, whoa, they're popping in. You didn't even know they were there. Um, they are going to, we're going to be helping explain how the program works, all the benefits of NetGalley, and we want to make sure your books and audiobooks flourish. Okay, that is our hope. Uh, every book that's posted there and audiobook, we want it to do well. All right, so a very big welcome to Christina and Katie. Hello. Hey. All right, so uh, we are going to get started. Uh, Katie's going to get us going, um, but we are, I'm grateful to have you all here. Y'all are the experts uh, at NetGalley, so this is really where the best questions are asked. Uh, they can answer literally everything you want to know about NetGalley. Don't undersell yourself, Christopher. We would consider you an expert as well. Oh, I set that <laughs> up. I really did. <laughs> all right. Awesome. Thanks so much for the introduction, Christopher. Um, my name is Katie Versus, as you said, um, and I'm here today to mostly talk about the tools that are available to, for publishers and authors using the IBPA program, as well as go over some frequently asked questions and talk a little bit about um, some of the differences between um, if you would like to list with us directly as well. So um, I am just going to stop my video here um, just so we can all focus, um, but I'll pop back on um, so we can all talk face to face. Um, at the end when we do questions. So goodbye for now. Um, okay. All right. So just to cover our bases, I know that we do have a few different levels of familiarity with NetGalley in attendance today. So we're just going to start a little broad here and begin with what is, um, what is NetGalley and why should you use it? So at its core, NetGalley is a way for you to distribute advanced reading or listening copies to readers of influence. That could mean anything from simply opening up your book to our built-in member base of 650,000 book advocates, or it could mean reaching your own list of trusted contacts via our, via our tools like the widget, or it could mean building your platform or the platform of your author if you're uh, running a publishing house. So NetGalley readers can leave feedback, make buying decisions, and influence how generally your book reaches the wider world. We have English language sites like netgalley.com and netgalley.co.uk, which you can actually um, add your book to at no extra cost. Um, but we also have German, French, and Japanese language sites. So if you have translations of your books in any of those languages and would like to list your book on NetGalley, um, please get in touch with us directly about that. We will put you in touch with the appropriate contact. I also really want you want to challenge the attendees here today not to necessarily just think of NetGalley as a way to distribute your arcs and build buzz for your books, but as a tool that you can use to achieve your goals. So what that means is as we're looking at the features that are available to you in the uh, IBPA's NetGalley program, I would also really love for you to consider how they can be incorporated into the work that you're already doing. So um, when you're using um, your own methods to expand your reach to communities that you may not have reached yet. This could mean reaching new audiences, engaging with important book buying influencers like librarians and booksellers, pitching to your major media contacts, and of course, delivering secure digital files to your growing network. So who is the NetGalley community? Each reader type is made up of six distinct categories, which is decided at sign up depending on how they plan to use the site. So we have, of course, our reviewers who might be bloggers, they might be social reviewers, podcasters, bookstagrammers, booktubers, book talkers, or of course, traditional reviewers. This section is always expanding as new social media outlets are added and grown in popularity. TikTok um, is a big, big one, especially that has grown in recent months. Um, so be sure to keep an eye out for those reviewer types, which um, if you're working with us directly, you can actually see linked um, directly in their member profile. You'll see a view of that a little bit later. We have educators. So those may be elementary school, high school, university educators, et cetera, anywhere in between that. 
Um, and we have our media. They might be traditional media who would cover books for a newspaper, magazine, radio show, um, all those types. Those are your what we call long lead types of members. So be sure to make sure that your book is available to them as soon as possible, especially if you're listing your book pre-publication. We have librarians who might be school, academic, or special librarians for all age groups. Our booksellers who range from indie bookstore workers to distributors, chains, and online retail stores. And then exciting, book trade professional. So not on this infographic, but we do have a brand new member category as of 2022. And this would be the category that most of you attending this event would fit into. It can include agents, authors, and publishers, or people who work in the publishing industry as a whole. So that's the member type that I'm listed on and in NetGalley. And I'm assuming Christina and Christopher are as well. Um, so in addition to writing reviews, it's always important to remember that there are other impactful ways that NetGalley members are using the site. So for example, a bookseller may use NetGalley to decide which books to order for their shelves. A librarian might be deciding which books to order for their collection. And so as a result, these um, can be really, really important lasting professional relationships that you can develop and foster through NetGalley. In fact, actually, librarians can also nominate your title for the library reads list directly from NetGalley itself, which can be a really incredible boost for your books for those uh, member types. And then, of course, booksellers can do the same for the Indie Next list as well. So how does using NetGalley via the IBPA work? Well, um, a lot of the strategy actually depends on how the publisher or author wants the process to go. If you are listing your book pre-publication, we recommend starting this process between three to six months in advance, with the six months being preferable if you're looking to target those uh, long leads like traditional media, which I mentioned earlier. Um, those are the ones who need time to read the book before they're writing their articles or developing their podcasts, things like that. Um, but generally, in most cases, the workflow for adding your book to NetGalley tends to follow this pattern after either creating their account if you're working with us directly or if you're listing with the IBPA. So first, a publisher will make their books available in the catalog either to allow for requests if you're working with us directly or the read now option if you're using the IBPA's program. The publisher can also send out pre-approved links to their own contacts, which is called the widget. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in depth later. The member will then request or access approved books. If the member has submitted a request, which again is only available uh, working with us directly, the publisher will then make the decision to approve or decline their request based on what type of reader or listener they find most valuable. Members then download, read, submit, and share their feedback for books. Um, and now I just wanted to give Christopher a couple of minutes to talk a bit about the IBPA setup process. So how you'd send them their fi your files, what setting your book up as read now means, um, and how they'll let you know when your book is ready. Thank you, Katie. Yeah. And I know Katie turned off her video, but people tell me they like me just to sit and watch. They just like watch. It's like Mystery Science 3000 without <laughs> the comedy. So... Um, oh, and you know what I want to mention is you mentioned about like, you know, new titles and promoting it on uh, NetGalley. A lot of people also promote books that have been out for years. Uh, and it's very helpful because sometimes you just want to, you know, reinvigorate uh, people to check out the book. Or let's say you have a book in a series and the third book came out, is about to come out. So sometimes you'll post the first book in the series to get people excited about it. So. Uh, NetGalley is not just for uh, books that are haven't been published yet. Just want to make that clear. Um, okay, so let me share my screen. I want to show you all on the website uh, where you can find uh, NetGalley and how you can sign up. Okay, so this is the IBPA website, and uh, there's more than one place you can find it, but um, store for publishers, and then this NetGalley program here, and then you'll see the different options. Um, but I also want you to go to the member benefits section um, because uh, this is where it's like a nice kind of like explanation of the program. Um, and apparently, Katie, you and I are very famous. We're on the website already. Um, and luckily, I'm not wearing the same outfit. That would be embarrassing. Um, okay. I double check that as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're so shallow. Um, okay, so uh, 
go down and you'll see there's different options. So three month digital galley listing, six month, um, and I'll, I'll let you all kind of you know review this later. I won't go through all the pricing right here. Um, and then there's an audiobook listing. There's three options for that. And then there's these promotional opportunities, which we'll get to in a second. Um, but as Katie was saying, um, there's definitely, uh, you know, like a lot of bonuses and, and, you know, reasons why you might do it directly through NetGalley or through us. Um, what's cool is like um, IBPA has like a three month listing. Um, NetGalley has a, a six month listing and um, they've been kind enough to uh, give our members uh, some awesome discounts on some of the pricing um, and same with the audiobook program. So we're grateful for that because um, our members are indie publishers and um, the other thing, and um, we can go back to uh, your slide um, so I can kind of go through all that. Um, but basically, when people, so you'll go here, you'll order the listing, and then you're going to get an email, and it's going to have a document you have to download. It's the next steps document. And I recommend actually, when you see that, download the PDF um, so that you can kind of go through the whole thing. But there's multiple steps. As Katie said, um, there's a metadata form that you need to fill out online and it's going to have your uh, title of your book, it's going to have the ISBN, all that stuff, and then you're going to need to upload your files and uh, there's a separate folder, uh, like a Dropbox folder, where you're going to do that, um, and then that's what we're going to then be posting. Um, and, you know, just double check when you're filling out all your information, make sure you get it right, you're the expert on your book. Uh, we can kind of try to check stuff, but you know, you're the publisher. So uh, make sure what you're giving us is the correct information, but we can always, you know, update it and change it later if you want. Um, and then another kind of like little pro tip for the digital galley, uh, we recommend using the paperback as your primary ISBN rather than your ebook ISBN, um, because uh, when you're listing archives, uh, NetGalley site looks for your um, like paperback ISBN on different retail sites and it'll automatically link to them. Uh, so you want to do that. Um, and uh, it's a really helpful for us. Um, should I talk about the reader approval versus the um, maybe I'll do that real quick. So if you do it through IBPA's IBPA program, we do a read now option versus a request option. So read now and listen now mean that anyone on NetGalley can just download your books or your um, audiobook, and that way they can they don't have to go through an approval process. Um, we found that indie publishers, you know, a lot of people don't know the authors and all that. They're more likely to give your book a chance if they don't have to go through the process of getting approved. Um, but if you want to be in control of saying like I only want you know certain people to download it, um, then you might be better off going directly through NetGalley. Um, but again, we found that, um, you know, it's hard enough for any publishers to get people to take notice. Um, and it's a very popular section to read now, listen now. So um, we know our, our members get a lot of downloads and all that, I think because of that. Um, so, oh, and another thing is IBPA is the main admin on your account. So all the information you're going to give us, um, you know, you can change your title. Uh, I mean, sorry, you can change your like book price. Uh, description all that you just have to email us and then we'll we'll do all that stuff for you um so just keep that in mind um some people try to go on to neck alley and they're like oh, i want to change it and we're like you can but you need to email us because we're the admin um cool all right katie take it away <clears throat> sorry i was just muted there um okay back up and running here um, all right, so one of the most frequently asked questions that we get is how and where NetGalley members share their reviews. Because, of course, NetGalley members can post their reviews on NetGalley itself, but many of them also share their reviews elsewhere online, like on a blog, a social media, or retail sites like Amazon and Barnes & Noble. First way they do this is through one-click one sharing, what we call one-click sharing. With, um, with our one-click sharing, NetGalley has provided a way for members to automatically connect their social media accounts to their NetGalley account, which pushes their reviews directly to Goodreads, Twitter, and LinkedIn. We also make it really easy for members to copy and paste their reviews to retail sites like Amazon, Kobo, Barnes & Noble. Um, the member just needs to click the link that takes them directly to the book on these retail sites sites, paste the review, and post. So you can see here um, on this screen, we've we've already copied it to your clipboard. So that's uh, very easy just to copy and paste that there. 
since many books, but as Christopher mentioned, not all books, um, are listed on NetGalley that are pre-publication, we also send reminders um, to our members for when the book goes on sale. So we do this uh, weekly via email reminders, as well as on the member shelf on the site itself. If a member has posted the review on their own personal blog or website, there's also a special section for links like this that are shared with the publisher in their reporting. And of course, it's not to be overlooked that a review on NetGalley itself can be just as impactful. Worldwide, NetGalley has over three quarters of a million dedicated readers, and many of our members use NetGalley exclusively to discover new books um, and also make buying decisions and provide word of mouth recommendation to their own communities. Um, Christopher also shared with us that one of the most frequently asked questions that he receives is how many reviews to expect. So this is um, kind of a tricky to answer question because the number of reviews per title varies depending on a lot of different factors. So simple things like the genre of the book or the cover design will influence requests, downloads, and feedback. And of course, um, just generally how well integrated NetGalley is with the publisher's marketing and publicity strategy. As I mentioned earlier, NetGalley is a tool. You should be thinking of NetGalley as a tool and how you use it will impact your results. You're of course always welcome to do a little research in your category though, just um, to browse the books on NetGalley and see how many and what kind of reviews are being left for similar books to what you're publishing. I think that's a really great strategy to um, kind of do a little bit of a dive into what you can expect. Oops, uh, too fast. Um, okay, so while we're talking about how members use the site, I wanted to do a quick overview of how members are actually using NetGalley to discover new books um, for those of you who haven't either used the site before as a publisher or a reader. And um, if you haven't used NetGalley as a member before, we absolutely recommend that you do, and I know Christopher does as well as a part of his setup. Um, so for reference, creating your own NetGalley uh, NetGalley member account um, is the only way that you can download and test your books for yourself, view your files and title record in the same way that a reader would, and see any reviews or cover ratings that might come rolling in. You can also see the site, um, how other publishers are promoting their books and take inspiration from other comparative titles. Um, it's also, you know, of course, a really easy and reliable way to do your own market research for what's new and exciting and, most importantly, effective. And um, as I mentioned before, the best way to use NetGalley as a member for probably most of you would be to sign up as a book trade professional. Um, that way publishers, other publishers know most accurately how you're using NetGalley if you plan on requesting any books. So I did want to take a couple minutes just to do a tour of what a reader account looks like and where we can see some on-site marketing promotions as well. So let me just get that set up there. Okay, so this is what NetGalley looks like um, signed in as a member. So this is just netgalley.com and this is what we refer to as our homepage. So this homepage um, shows a, a bunch of books that are currently available on the site right now. These are um, all on here for free and they're gonna be hosted here for an entire week. So these books um, tend to get a lot of traffic. Um, and if you're working with us directly, you can nominate any of your books um, to this program for free. So it's it's one of our free nomination-based programs. So that's a really great boost to your books. You can see how easy it is just to sign up and become a member. Um, and you can access any of our international sites really easy from here as well. If I'm a member, I'm going to spend a lot of my time on this dashboard view here. So you can see that I can really easily click into my categories. This is why it's really, really important to make sure that you're choosing categories carefully because um, I'm being promoted directly right when I log in um, books in my categories. So always maximize the amount of categories that you can use so that you can add up to three at one time. You can see I'm, I can scroll through all the titles in my categories right from the homepage. Um, and I'm prompted to rate and review titles and I can see all of my favorite publishers just right here at a glance. Then I can hop to my shelf. So I'm, you can see here where I'm prompted to start reading these books. I can either read on Kindle or download to my computer or use the NetGalley shelf app as well on my phone. You can also give feedback, see any feedback that I've sent or um, search the titles that I have um, on NetGalley that I've been approved for. 
I did just want to take a look here in this browse publisher section so we can see the IBPA's um, publisher profile. So you can see that I favorited them so I can really easily access them from the home page. And I can just take a look and see any of the recently added books, um, some of the most requested books here. This is a really fun view if you're um, taking a look and you want to see if if your book is um, one of the most requested books in the IBP, IBPA's account. So it's it's really fun to kind of take a look and see what's what's new and exciting in, in that account view. And of course, you can see previously on NetGalley as well. Then next, you can go to the find title section. So this is what we refer to as our catalog. You can see the recently added audiobooks. This featured on NetGalley section is actually a um, marketing promotion that um, IBPA members can participate in. So Christopher will talk about that a little bit later. Recently added books. And then this most requested book section is also um, just generally here. These are the most requested books on all of NetGalley. But you can also take a look at the most um, requested books in each category. So um, if you have um, a specific uh, genre book, then you want to take a look at, for example, poetry, and you want to see if your book is, is among the most requested, you can take a look through this view here. Um, so Christopher mentioned that all um, IBPA titles are listed as Read Now. So if you want to take a look here, um, you can view all Read Now titles or audiobooks via the Read Now or Listen Now button. So good idea to take a look at those. And um, another one of the marketing promotions that IBPA members can participate in is called our category spotlights. So that's what this is here. You can see that this book is being spotlighted here in this general fiction category for a full week. This, this book will be featured up here um, that whole time. And then we also have what is called um, our recently added audiobook spotlight. So that's another promotion that um, IBPA members can participate in. If you just take a look at the fine titles and then in recently added audiobooks, you can see that this audiobook here is being spotlighted um, for the whole week in, in this section here as well. Okay. Um, let's hop back to the presentation. Okay, so since I mentioned audiobooks a few times now, uh, we just wanted to spend some dedicated time to talk about the audiobooks on NetGalley. So I just wanted to introduce Christina, who's going to talk a little bit about our audiobook program. Thanks, Katie, and hello, everyone. Um, I don't want to take away too much time from the overall presentation. So just want to give you a few quick highlights about audio on NetGalley. And I see some questions about audio coming in too. Hopefully, we'll answer those as we get through these next couple of slides. Um, this first slide is really just here to demonstrate our experience with audiobooks so far. As you can see, we introduced audio on NetGalley back in 2020. Our members were super excited about it, and we have seen record-breaking activity across the site, um, both from our members and from publishers. So as you can see, over 200 audiobooks, 10% of all books that were uploaded to NetGalley in 2022 really, really exciting um, uh, growth in the past two years. You can go to the next slide, Katie. So here you can see just how rapidly the interest in audiobooks has grown among our members. Um, and of course, as the overall popularity of the format continues to grow, we also anticipate that the number of audiobook listeners on NetGalley will continue to match that excitement. Um, Earlier, Katie mentioned that a lot of IBPA members are asking about how early they should be adding their titles to NetGalley. And with audio, we know that there's generally much less of a pre-pub period just due to the production timelines that kind of are required for audio in many cases. So last fall, I did a little bit of digging to find out when publishers actually are uploading audiobooks to NetGalley and discovered that most audiobooks are uploaded within the 30-day period before the pub date. So this kind of tracks with what I've been hearing about when publishers are getting their final files, um, which is usually pretty close to the pub date. But as Christopher mentioned, and Katie also sort of reinforced, 
the most important thing to remember is that not all books that are on NetGalley are pre-publication. So even if you have your files, whether that's for a digital review copy or for an audiobook, um, very, very close to the pub date, you can still upload them to NetGalley and you're still going to benefit from having them on the site. Um, a lot of our members are really interested in finding books that are new to them, not always necessarily brand new to the market. So um, never feel restricted by your pub dates, either for audio or for um, your eBooks. There is a lot more information about the research that I did um, over at our blog, NetGalley Insights, and the URL is here on the slide. Uh, and I also encourage you to keep an eye out for my article in the next uh, issue of the IBPA Independent. That article is all about tips for marketing your audiobooks. So little teaser here. And if you want more, just take a look at our NetGalley Insights article and that IBPA Independent article as well. Um, Christopher, I think your next bit about how to upload audiobooks or get them over to you is going to be an answer to one of the questions that I see in the Q&A too. Yeah, uh, and I can say uh, it's very exciting when um, you all, uh, Nick Kelly, offered the audiobooks because our members had those and wanted to promote them. So it, we, when you all said you were going to do that, we were like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. So uh, it's been really fun uh, to do this new program. Um, okay, so Nat Alley has uh, very specific details, uh, technical specs about how they need the files. So, um, for example, with the audio books, as you'll see, uh, not only you know do you they, the chapters are in MP3, um, but it's the naming format. You don't need to memorize right now how that is, but we're going to send you documents when you order the listing. So you definitely want to make sure to read it very carefully because if you don't name your um, chapters like correctly, then it will kind of be all messed up and not show up properly. So, but don't worry, we'll help you through the process. But I just want to make sure that you understand that. Um, the other thing is, uh, there's, you know, they there used to be for Kindle Mobi files. Um, those are not used anymore. So the awesome thing about NetGalley is they will convert an EPUB uh, or PDF. It converts to um, a Kindle file. So you don't need to worry about that. You're going to get a Kindle version. Um, but on that note, EPUBs are great for all books that are like just text. If you have a picture heavy book, let's say a children's picture book, sometimes cookbooks, things like that, a PDF is better um, because just of the way the formatting and the fact that a PDF is a fixed layout. So if you're going to have a children's picture book, you're going to give it to us as a PDF. Um, there's in terms of sizes and all that, I won't get into all that, but basically there are very specific details about the size of these as well. Um, but those are that's kind of the, the important thing. Um, so. It, as well with the PDF, um, they don't really convert as well to the Kindle files. So that's okay though, um, like children's picture books, for example, do really well in our program and people are used to that. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Um, also in that regard, um, sometimes people try to create, especially author publishers, they try to create their own files. They're trying to save money. Um, I would not recommend saving money uh, doing this. Um, it, you, you spent years of your life, um, or if you're an author, or if you're a publisher for other people's books, um, they're trusting you to get their work done right, uh, hire a professional ebook designer. Um, because all too often, we'll try to upload an EPUB, and it won't work properly. And then I'll reach out and say, hey, uh, can you let your ebook designer know this isn't working well? And they'll say, oh, I designed it myself. And I'll be like, mm -hmm, I had a feeling. So please um, get professionals to do all your work. Um, and we don't like to do it, but um, it really slows down the process. So if we've tried and you keep giving us bad files, at some point um, we have a $20 bad file fee just because it's literally taking away from us posting other people's books. But again, we really don't like to do that. So just give us uh, working files. Um, but all of these will be explained all the tech specs in much more detail in the documents you're going to get and then again we're happy to kind of help walk you through that process too wonderful thank you christopher so just moving on to the actual meat of what netgal can do for you um starting with one of our most important tools on the site the widget I did mention this briefly already, but in addition to requesting digital review copies or audiobooks from the catalog, another way that a member can be granted access to your book is through a tool called the NetGalley widget. 
The widget is a pre-approved link that allows a NetGalley member to download the secure file from NetGalley. So you as the author or publisher can then and can and should include the widget in outreach to your own list of trusted contacts. Even if they're not yet a NetGalley member, they can always sign up. This means that you can send the widget to all of your own personal contacts and they'll be able to automatically download your book if they have or create a NetGalley account. All NetGalley files are protected with built-in DRM, and you can always see a full list of everyone who has accessed your book, whether that's through the widget or otherwise via the reports that the IBPA can send you when you ask for it. So who exactly should you be sending the widget to? Well, that can really depend on who your target audience is, but in general, the widget should be sent to anyone who should be receiving a free digital copy of your book. So this could be a list of powerful bloggers, librarians, booksellers, or even book clubs that you've partnered with. For example, for a nonfiction book about baseball, it would be a good idea to send the widget to a blogger with a special interest in the sport, an influential radio host, or even a well-known coach who you know has a social media following. Anyone who has an important voice in the industry that you're trying to target should receive the widget. If you're a publisher, um, it's also a really great idea to share the widget with the book's author so that they can do their own outreach for their own list of contacts. After all, of course, a really involved author knows exactly who they want to reach with their book. Just make sure to emphasize that they should not be sharing the widget via social media since that can be very public. Um, you can also add the widget to your monthly newsletter or if you're attending a conference or event, you can share the widget URL with attendees or create um, a QR code if attending in person. So once a member has been approved to read the book, either via the read now option or by clicking on the widget or approving the request, they can then choose their preferred reading device or app. From here, your file, as I mentioned, is protected automatically via DRM. This is essentially our built-in file security. It ensures that all of your files have uh, DRM applied um, and aren't able to be printed, shared, distributed, et cetera. When all of the available download options are turned on, that means that members can download via their computer or tablet, their Kindle, their Kobo, or any other reading device, and via their through their phone um, through the NetGalley Shelf app. The NetGalley Shelf app is actually also the only way to listen to audiobooks on the site, so um, that's the exclusive way to do that. Your book may actually have um, special accommodations that may mean certain download options um, need to be turned off. So, for example, as Christopher mentioned, an, an image heavy file like a children's book may not work well on Kindle devices. So um, that option would be turned off likely. So if your book is over 80 megabytes, the NetGalley Shelf app may also need to be turned off. Um, either way, the IBPA team will um, be able to give you more information about this when you submit your book. We know that authors and publishers are always trying to be more metrics driven, which is why we try to give our clients as much access to data and reporting as possible for their book. So um, I just wanted to take a, a dive into what this means for you and uh, look at some of the reporting and data that's available in, you, in your account or um, via the IBPA. Um, but first, I did want to let Christopher take over for a bit just to chat about how you can receive your reports and when. All right, so uh, yes, these reports are amazing. And uh, to Katie's point earlier, what's great is that, again, NetGalley is wonderful for reviews, but these reports give you such a cool look at things like, like how many likes your cover gets. I mean, if you're, especially in pre-publication, if your cover is getting 150 you know, dislikes, well, you might need to rethink that, right? So there's some really great stuff. Um, basically, again, IBPA is the admin, so we're happy to send you reports. Uh, you just email me, say, hey, I love my reports uh, anytime. You know, we don't, we're not like, oh, you already asked for them this week. No, we will send them anytime. Just email me and we're happy to send them your way. Um, and there's uh, some really cool reports. Uh, Katie's going to go over that. And even after your listing archives, um, you know, no one can download it for free anymore, but you'll still be getting reviews. Um, because people uh, can, if they download your book during the time it was uh, available for download, 
they can still leave reviews and that's helpful um, because it sometimes it takes a while to read a book or listen to an audiobook. So then you'll still be getting reviews, I don't know, it's like a year or so later. Um, and you can email me and say, hey, can I get the reports in case you want to reach out to that reviewer to say, you know, thank you so much, all that stuff. Um, so definitely, um, you know, be in touch with us about these reports. And Kitty will tell you a little bit more about each one. Yes, I will. All right, getting to our first report here, um, we have our detailed activity report, which um, I think can be an incredible resource for a publisher. Um, it's one of my favorite reports on the site. This Excel report shows a list of all of the readers who have shown an interest in a book by clicking either request, um, if you're working with us directly, or read or listen now buttons. This report is really excellent for following up with readers. So to remind them to download the book if they haven't done so yet, or to ask the, for their feedback if they haven't submitted any yet. Um, generally, generally, we find that authors and publishers find an increased feedback return when you're use, using this report regularly. Um, and it's a really great way to connect with your engaged readers. You may want to use this report to contact readers to tell them when the book is on sale or make them aware of any publicity events that the author might be participating in. So, Kind of disguise the limits with limit skies the limit with that one. Um, it's a really fun and creative way to connect with with your community. Then next we have our snapshot PDF report, which is a really easy to share PDF of all of the data that's being collected about your book. Um, there's a lot available on that report, so we'll talk about it um, in detail a little bit later on. And then we have the feedback report. This is a consolidated Excel report that collects all of the information about the reviews a publisher has received through NetGalley. So this report can be used to identify which members are actively engaging with your title, and you can use it to email these readers to thank them for their feedback. You may even want to use this report to give them information about the next book in a series or a similar comparative title that you think they might like. Um, and if that's the case, then you should definitely send them a widget to the other book. Then we have the opinions report. So this report shows individual responses from member specific questions, such as, would you order this digital galley or audiobook for your library? Um, which of course is asked to librarians. And then after looking at this information, you might consider reaching out to interested booksellers to arrange an author webinar with their, with their store or um, connect offer to connect media to the author for an interview, um, whichever is indicated on that report. To cover bases, of course, I did want to go over a few best practices for using those reports. We can always use a refresher, I think. Um, and of course, recent news tells us that security should always be on everyone's minds um, and that it's really crucial that authors and publishers comply with all local laws and statutes related to the protection and legal use of members' personal information. Publishers may use visible email addresses in these reports to contact members directly. However, um, communications to these members must only relate to that member's neck ally activity. If you will be emailing multiple members at the same time, please remember to use the BCC function so um, that other email addresses are not visible to other members who receive that email. Um, some really great examples for using the information available in these reports are following up with members to remind them to submit or share feedback for a book, or um, inviting members to request or download another one of your books that they may enjoy on NetGalley while clearly acknowledging that the invitation is based on their prior activity. So for example, thank you for your NetGalley review of our title. We think you'd really love the next book in this series. And then you would include a widget to that. And of course, if you have any questions about the proper use of reports, you can always contact me or my colleagues um, at concierge at negali.com or of course, Christopher, I'm sure would be happy to um, set you straight on that as well. <laughs> and then um, back to fun stuff. As promised, I wanted to hop back to that snapshot PDF report that I mentioned, which I think um, is, yeah, it could tell you a lot of really interesting data about your book on the site. So this screen here shows all of the information that can be found on the snapshot PDF. As you can see here, a book can receive a star rating, impressions, cover ratings, and specialized feedback from each member type, which can be found in that opinions report we talked about there. So that's just at the bottom there. 
we're not going to go in depth about all this info because there's a lot, but um, what some of this data means and how an author or publisher might find it useful, we'll talk about a few different important parts there. So you see the statistics section, so section A here, um, shows a title's general performance on the site, as well as how members are following through. So you can take a look at this relationship between the impressions, um, as well as click to read and the feedback to see how your uh, the pipeline is working that, uh, for your title. So with this section, you can see whether the strategies that you're um, enacting are actually successful. Then we've got the reason for request section. So ENF on this infographic um, provides early indicators about what aspect of a book are resonating with readers. So in other words, why are they requesting in the first place? A publisher can use this information in kind of two ways. So to see what's working and to see where there's room to find a new strategy. So if for example, most NetGalley members are requesting access to a book based on the description, you know that copy, your copy that you have for your book is effective and catchy. If most members are requesting based on the author or narrator, you can capitalize on that personal connection in your ongoing marketing and outreach. Of course, on the flip side, um, if only a few NetGalley members are telling you that they're requesting a book because they keep hearing about it, you can tell that you might need to be showing that book in more places and do some more proactive building um, your word of mouth buzz. In section D, so um, that's down here, you can see the cover ratings that have been collected throughout the book's time on the site. Um, if you see lots of thumbs up in the cover rating section in, in this section, um, you know that you have an especially compelling cover. You should maybe consider using it rather than, for example, author photos in marketing campaigns and social media posts. And of course, um, just a quick tip, if, if NetGalley members are only lukewarm on a cover design, they won't usually downvote it. So I really think you should consider downvotes to be really strongly held opinions. And then next, you'll also see this word cloud here um, in your snapshot PDF report, which is a visual representation of the most frequently used words that members are using in their reviews for your book. With the word cloud, authors and publishers can see at a glance how members are describing a title. So you can use those words to update the book description, guide your keywords and metadata, as well as um, you can edit your ad copy with these words. So for this specific book here, the publisher should consider using words like psychological thriller, um, mystery, suspense. All these words are proof that members are using these words to talk about the book, and you should absolutely as well. This will help with something called search engine optimization or SEO. You may have heard that word before. If you're um, unfamiliar with the term, it essentially means that you're actively looking for ways to improve your web presence, which is always good. So from the previous example here, if a member is searching Amazon for psychological mystery books, um, this book could pop up. It could be the first thing that pops up if, they, um, if you start using all those keywords in your metadata. And next, the title activity chart here, um, shown here, which is also on your snapshot activity report, is a line graph that shows different kinds of activity for your title on NetGalley over time. It shows data for impressions, requests, members with access, feedback, and reviews. So um, in this specific example, you can see lots of big spikes in impressions. So that's what this um, spike here is, this blue line. Um, each of those would actually um, indicate something that the author did to promote the book. So that could be sharing a link to the book on social media or posting about it in a newsletter or sharing the widget. Um, and if you've ever booked a promotion with us, you, you'd also be able to see this info indicated by a little red or green square at the bottom of the chart whenever the promotion begins. So it would look like this here. You can see the actual um, spike in interest from that. Oops. Okay, um, as we talked a little bit um, early, NetGalley also has a number of opportunities to promote your title store community. Um, there's something pretty much for every budget and every goal, including newsletter options, category spotlights, and featured placements for distinct themes and targeted engagement. So Christopher is going to talk a little bit more in depth about the options that are available to you as IBK members, and then I'll follow up with that some with some FAQ. So we got asked about these promotions specifically. Yeah, thank you. Some people were asking about the way that the reports look. So you just showed two of them. 
Uh, the detailed activity report and the opinions report are Excel spreadsheets. So you're going to get those and like for the detailed activity report, it's going to be how, you know, any Excel spreadsheet looks uh, where it's got all these different rows and columns. And then you're going to have people's email addresses, uh, you know, which type of download they did, all that stuff. So I don't know, Katie, if you have some examples of that, but it's that's basically how they look. Um, yeah, okay. can show one later. Maybe they're they're not the most fun to look at, but we can show an example for sure. Excel spreadsheets are super awesome. OK, so I'm going to share my screen again so you all can see what the um, what the promotions are. Uh, so here are like, again, this is that main page for NetGalley. Um, we've got the category spotlight and that's for any particular category. Uh, so sci-fi and fantasy, mystery and thrillers. Uh, it's one week on the top of that category and it's in split up into three different types so top four categories are you know the most popular in that galley so you can see those listed here um, and then the other all the other categories are split between these two so just look and see which one fits your book um they're they're great you know some people are like oh does that mean i'll get less you know like clicks or downloads because it's you know like a category that's not as popular um no not necessarily i mean if somebody loves let's say like arts and photography i mean they're they're going to go on that page so but of course you know there's a reason these are you know the top four categories um they're the ones people read the most so they you know they do get a lot of traffic on those um feature placement those are great that's a one week ad and remember where katie showed you the fine titles so that's where everyone goes on that gallery to look up books and audiobooks so on the top of that page is going to be the ad so that's a really great uh, placement for people to see that your listings available. Uh, we're excited about this, this is new the featured carousel so uh, the feature placement, you know, has a bunch of different from all these different publishers uh, and it's uh, on that fine titles page so the featured carousel is going to be all IBPA books so it's going to be we're going to call it great indie reads from IBPA. Uh, we're doing it four times a year, so um, you know your listing has to be live during that time. So just look at these different dates and see if your listing's live during that time. Um, but it's going to be a really great place uh, that's specifically highlighting IBPA books. Um, we're, we're really excited about that. Uh, this is another new one this year, recently added audiobook spotlight. So there's a recently added section for the digital galley and audiobooks. Um, and for the audiobooks recently added section, you're uh, going to have a really cool promotion. Uh, it's going to be not just on that first page, though. What's cool about this one is every single page where there are recently added audiobooks, your ad's going to show up. So in terms of like exposure, that's a lot of exposure for your audiobook. And then we're excited. We've got these four, and they're in the newsletters. So as some of you all might know, newsletters that go directly to people's emails is some of the most efficient and effective marketing out there. So the NetGalley newsletters are like really very, they're very effective. Um, and we're grateful because uh, NetGalley has given us opportunities to be in those newsletters, um, which are a little bit more on, on the pricier end based on some of our members' budgets um, at a really awesome rate. So the bonus section, you'll see it's gonna be, um, there's a section that has all the covers and it goes, that newsletter goes out to between 25 and 28,000 NetGalley members, which is very cool. Um, and then there's a premium edition of the newsletter that goes out to 75,000 members. Um, and same thing, the banner ad is really cool. It um, has a, you'll see here, that's what the banner ad looks like. So you'll see it in the, um, this is that Neckelly bonus section. It just has the covers you see. Uh, but if you do the banner ad, it's like, you know, the cover of your book, it has like whatever text you want to add. Uh, so in terms of effectiveness, um, those are really some awesome options. Uh, so go, you go to, again, you go to that page, you'll order your um, promotion, you'll click on it, and uh, you'll want to order it when you, if you can, uh, when you order the, um, the listing, uh, because these are first come first serve a lot of them, and they fill up sometimes months in advance. So uh, you don't have to pick a date that's right when your listing, you know, goes live. It's just that you want to probably order it sooner than later, and you can then pick a date that's whatever, two months into your listing. Um, but you want to like make sure you book it now so you can lock that in. Um, these promotions in NetGalley are really popular and, you know, we want you to be able to book it and not miss out on it. So just just keep that in mind um, and when you're promoting it. And in fact, I think like sometimes if you do a promotion that, that's going to end up being like a month or two months in, 
is actually really great because then it gets eyeballs back on your listing. Um, so those are the promotions. If you have any other questions, you're welcome to email me about that. <clears throat> awesome. Thank you. Um, okay, so I, Christopher already touched on some of these points that I have to talk about. Ooh. There we go. Um, that I have to talk about, but um, one of the most frequently asked questions that we get is which promotion is best for me and my book. Um, of course, it's different. Um, different books require different strategies, but a really great way to narrow this down for yourself is to think about what kind of audience you're looking to target and what your budget is, and how to reach what you're looking or how wide a reach you're looking to achieve. So. <laughs> you have to remember looking to reach every book reader is, ever is not necessarily a good strategy to have. In fact, it's it's not a good strategy to have. So um, if you haven't started thinking about your target audience, you definitely should be doing that. Um, for example, so if you think, um, well, since a, since a category spotlight is featured in any particular category, you should be reaching NetGalley members who are super specifically into your book's genre. So a member who is passionate and knowledge, knowledgeable about poetry will obviously be regularly scoping out that specific category. So you may want to use a category spotlight for your upcoming poetry title, for example. So any genre title should um, take advantage of that category spotlight for sure. You can also think about the feature title section really similarly, but this option has more general themes beyond genre. So we've got things like debut authors or Pride Month books. So um, if you're launching your LGBTQ plus book during the summer, definitely optimize your launch with this uh, a Pride Month promotion. That's a great way to take advantage of that. And then if you have uh, a bit more wiggle room with your budget, the newsletter option um, di directly reaches the inbox of members. And as Christopher said, um, those are some of the most um, widely clicked on uh, marketing promotions. So um, you know that your book will only reach members who are interested in that specific category. So um, if you have a mystery and thriller um, book, for example, the newsletter is not going to go out to readers who exclusively like romance novels. So um, you're really targeting really specific members. And um, as Christopher said, our, our newsletter our newsletter program regularly pushes books into the most requested section. So um, it's it's a really great option um, if you're kind of looking to boost um, your book in that specific section there. So it's, it's some of the best um, marketing promos that you can participate in in general. All right, so that brings us to the end of the presentation. Um, on this slide here, you can review a few different ways that you can list your books on NetGalley, including via the IBPA and then through NetGalley directly. So when you're listing Net with NetGalley directly, we have the option to either list on a paper title basis, which is really great for authors and smaller publishers, but we also do have our subscription option, which is best for publishers who have at least 10 titles throughout the year that they'd like to list on the site either audiobook or DRC, which is uh, digital review copies. And also um, special IBPA members receive 10% off the first year of service for their subscription option. So um, if you do connect with us directly, make sure to let us know that you are an IBPA member and we'll make sure you get that discount. And then uh, if you have any questions about listing with Negali directly, you can email me. Um, my email address is on the screen there. Um, and then I think, Christopher, you'll be sending a copy of these slides to everyone after the show, right? Yep, I will be sending it to them, absolutely. Awesome, so no need to write my email address down. You'll have that a little bit later. Um, but I think now we can move on to questions. Yeah, well, thank you, Katie and Christina. So uh, we definitely have a few questions, uh, one of which, and, and I want to make clear, people are asking about um, again, pre-pub versus backlist titles. So NetGalley is for both. Um, it is for anything that you've ever published or want to publish. It does very well um, for many different reasons. If you've already published a book, then it can renew interest in the book. Um, I've, I'm an author publisher myself. You know, I have books that are older and I want people to still read them and they might never know they existed. So NetGalley is great because then um, they're just looking for amazing books. Readers do not care. I'm a reader too. They do not care if a book was published 10 years ago, 50 years ago. They just want to read an amazing book. So this is a great way to remind them that your book exists. 
Um, and uh, people are asking about the backlist titles if there's like an additional like discount or something. Um, you know, NetGalley is uh, very effective for both prepub and backlist titles, so uh, it's the same price. So it's um, you know, and you can see on our website uh, the different prices. But um, you know, we don't have like a special discount for like if it's like an older book because again, it gets amazing uh, coverage on NetGalley just like prepub. Um, on that note, though, in terms of discounts. Um, Audio, if you have an audiobook version and a digital galley version of the same book, um, email me and I'm happy to give a $40 discount if you want to post both uh, to get, uh, you know, extra exposure for both. Because um, I want to, you know, I think people sometimes think, oh, if I'm, you know, promoting my digital galley, I, I don't need to promote my audiobook, but um, I think it's important to promote both. Um, and they will connect on NetGalley, so people will see you have both versions. And I don't know about you all, but sometimes I will, will read a book and then also be listening to the audio book, depending on like where I am, you know, if I'm in a car versus, you know, on a walk or uh, then just sitting at my, you know, on my bed reading or something. Um, okay, so uh, another question that people were asking is, um, I'm doing NetGalley with Books Go Social right now. It ends in a couple of weeks. Can I then switch to your program? Um, so you're welcome to post your listing through IBPA. Absolutely. Um, just reach out and we'll work out the details. Um, but yeah, we are happy to, um, you know, do whatever book. Um, and let's see, uh, another question is in general, how successful are free book promotions? Also, how to decide a budget for promoting a book or series could be endless amount of money, but how to target ads is a conundrum. Thanks for the presentation. Uh, Christina, Katie, do y'all want to answer that one? <laughs> yep. I can jump in if you want, Katie. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I mean, the free promotions are very successful. Um, we we do have some stats about you know uh, activity and things like that that we can we can share if you you know shoot an email to us and and we're happy to uh, give whatever additional details you might need to make that decision. Um, same thing too. I saw a question earlier asking, you know, which category spotlight should I invest in if my book is in these two categories? You know, if you want some information that is specific like that, just send Christopher an email. He will pass that along to us and we can, you know, fill in all of those sorts of, of answers. We certainly don't want you to feel like you have to spend an endless amount of money. Figuring out how to target your ads is definitely something that our team, that Christopher's team are very, very good at. So just let us know, you know, more details about your book, more details about your goals. And we're sort of happy to help however we can. And I did want to mention this too. I, I don't know if I can't remember if I mentioned this um, in the presentation, but our free promotion specifically, um, the homepage one is nomination based and um, is uh, on our homepage, so NetGalley.com, it's 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 one of our, or if not, is the most trafficked um, page on our whole entire website. So your book could be seen by the most amount of people who are visiting NetGalley at any one time. So um, it's yeah, it's 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 definitely an effective uh, promotion on our site specifically. Yeah, and I also want to mention this kind of related is that um, what's really cool about NetGalley is that. Uh, we have any publishers that you know go through our program, but some of the biggest publishers in the world are on NetGalley. So your books are side by side with books that they've been like can't wait to read and have been you know learning about. So in terms of like you know promotion, um, that kind of cross promotion, um, it's a really great place for you to get exposure because these are again six hundred fifty thousand people looking for books. These people love books. So this is a really great place for you all to get a chance to connect to that audience that are book lovers, um, librarians, all that stuff. Um, is there any feedback you all want to give in terms of sometimes people are looking to target a specific market, let's say booksellers or librarians, anything you all can say about NetGalley for those purposes? Yeah, for sure. So we do have specific newsletters that target librarians um, and booksellers individually. So those are um, both really awesome newsletters. I think uh, the bookseller um, newsletter in particular has a really, really high open rate. So we know that booksellers are really relying on the bookseller um, newsletter to have some of those best books delivered directly to their inboxes. Um, 
And then also um, we know that um, librarians really depend on audiobooks as well. So I, I just think um, it probably makes their lives a little easier just to be able to click on an audiobook and, and preview books um, as they're doing whatever. But um, so if you're really looking to target librarians, I really think um, audio is the way to go in that department. Uh, sometimes also, some people ask me, they're a little worried, hey, if I give my book away for free or my audiobook away for free, is it going to cut into my sales? Can you all explain uh, why that is not the case? Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's a great question. So if you are working pre-publication, um, that buzz that you're building a pre-publication is going to help your book um, reached the hands of readers who um, wouldn't have heard of, of your book before. So it's really exposing your book to communities and um, that in itself does help um, spread the word about your book. So it's not necessarily uh, cutting into your sales, it's actually actively promoting your book to new audiences. And um, in, in the same way with post-publication as well, there's no real um, downside to reaching your book reaching new readers because they're gonna talk about it if they really love it and um, posting about it on social media or posting about it um, on NECLA itself, like you're, you're reaching new communities regardless of um, whether you're giving the book away for free on Neck Alley or, or otherwise in other marketing promotions. Yeah, I'll just add to what Katie just said about word of mouth is certainly, you know, one of the most important things we know word of mouth, whether that is verbally word of mouth, friend to friend over a glass of wine, or whether it's reviews or, or whatever that's happening online, that is very, very powerful. And the other piece of this is the algorithms that reviews get sort of caught up in. So for retail sites, especially a site like Amazon, the number of reviews, um, the amount of engagement that's happening on your book page will help your book to show up more in search. It kind of all plays into that SEO, search engine optimization, algorithmic kind of work. So it is an important piece of your overall marketing plan for sure. And then also the Neck Alley page. So let's say you do a three month listing. Your book or audiobook is not free to download anymore, but your page lives on Neck Alley forever. And that's free advertising, you know, I mean, like Goodreads or Amazon, whatever website you're looking at, these are book lovers are going through this site. They'll see all the amazing reviews you got, and now they can't download it for free. So now they go, oh, I got to buy this thing. And again, Neck Alley makes it easy. They have buttons on the page that they click to then go to a retail site. So this, it's like free advertising then forever. Uh, can yeah, you know, I Oh, go ahead. Sorry, I was just going to mention you could you could absolutely take advantage of our, our Google presence too. Even um, I know a lot of um, authors and publishers kind of struggle to get their books on you know, the first and second page of Google. Netcali doesn't have that problem. We um, can be very easily searchable. Your book, um, if your book is on Netcali, it can be on the top results. Um, so that's always a good boost as well. And uh, sometimes people reach out to me asking about like they're worried their book or you know or audiobook is going to be stolen. Um, like piracy, things like that. So can you talk about how Neck Alley ensures that, um, you know, your, your files on your website are protected? Yep, so every book on Neck Alley um, is protected with DRM. So that's digital right man rights management, and it prevents your files from being copied, shared, printed, et cetera. So your books are never going to get um, you no, know, none of those things will happen if you do have DRM enabled. And that is, um, if you're working with us directly, that is customizable. We have different types of DRM, or even if you would like to remove the DRM altogether, that's completely up to you. Um, but the way that IBPA works, they do have DRM enabled, so you can feel safe that all of your books are protected from um, being shared or printed or copied, et cetera. And someone asked, um, how much traffic or reviews do you see for more literary and somewhat critical texts? So like poetry, literary, nonfiction, uh, they want to reach specific audiences in like Canada and the US uh, for these types of books and audiobooks. So we, we like to say that Neck Alley is kind of a microcosm of the industry as a whole. So what that means is essentially um, all of the books that you're going to see when you walk into a bookstore um, or the, the genres, I mean, um, when you walk into a bookstore, 
the most popular genres in a bookstore are going to, going to be the same on NetGalley. Um, so there are more popular genres and, and less popular genres, of course. Um, but what we do find is that the people who are really, really passionate about those genres are very, very active. So um, even though, you know, your, your poetry title may not necessarily be reaching the most popular genre category on NetGalley, the people who love poetry really, really love poetry. So um, there'll be um, lots of interaction with your book in that way. Um, and yeah, that that's a great way to reach specific audiences as well. Um, as we talked about a little bit before, um, you can give your book a little bit of a boost with those category spotlights to um, target those specific audiences in those genres. Yeah, well, anything else um, that you all want to mention? Uh, we're, we're getting kind of close to the end here. I just want to make sure that there's any last minute words of wisdom uh, you want to share. Nope, no words of wisdom. Okay. <laughs> uh, actually, there's one last question. Uh, is there some sort of reviewer management? For example, is there a reviewer who's downloading lots of books, not really leaving reviews? Is there something that will ultimately uh, prevent them from continuing to do that? Um, so you, can you all talk about like how you incentivize people to leave good reviews and all that? Yeah, I can hop in and answer that one, Katie. I was just reading this question as you were asking us if we had any final parting thoughts, Christopher. Um, so, you know, first I will say that by and large, Neck Alley members do take their, their role as, you know, book people and book influencers really seriously. We really don't have that many instances where members are misbehaving. Um, if we do, there are ways that we manage that. Of course, uh, we have a dedicated team that um, engages with our community on a regular basis, both in positive ways and when we need to sort of manage their behavior in this kind of way. So we do have things in place that allow us to block somebody from um, uh, accessing the site anymore. So we can deactivate members account if we need to. There are also ways for um, Christopher as the IBPA lead or for um, a publisher who signed up with us directly to flag any inappropriate reviews um, to mute members. So for instance, if there is somebody who you know, you are looking at a request, right? If you're managing each individual request, which you can do if you've signed up with us directly, um, and you say, oh, this person is probably not someone that I'm ever going to approve, or I looked at their reviews and they seem really critical all the time, you can mute that member so that you just will not ever accidentally approve them. Our team does look very closely at things like flagged reviews, muted members, and things like that to get ahead of any problems that might eventually present themselves. So we do take that community piece of it very, very seriously. But as I said, it is really a, a pretty minimal problem. Our members are really great, really great book people. Um, more than anything, they're asking us for ways to be better members. And that is just a wonderful position to be in. Thank you. Well, thanks to everyone watching this on our website. We really appreciate it. I'm going to stop recording now, but you're always welcome to email me at Christopher at IBPA-online.org. I can also help connect you to the Neck Alley team. Um, and we just appreciate it. Always ask questions. We're happy to help. Thanks for listening. And uh, give me two seconds.